All right, problem six, we got this function, piecewise function shown here for the interval x is below negative two and greater than or equal to negative two. So we have a linear equation and then a quadratic. You need to figure out which of these are true. So it looks like they're all talking about being continuous and differentiable. So let's look at con continuity. For something to be con continuous um, at a point, let me just draw a hypothetical graph here. It basically has to never have any um like whole points of discontinuity. Like so, for example, or like there's and there's a couple ways this is gonna happen. Let me just they there they can't there can't be any open circles. Um, that would not count. There can't be like like you know a jump like this. Maybe the graph goes continues like that. So no jumps. No holes, they say, and like no like um. That's pretty uh, actually that's pretty much it. I, I mean, uh, that I can think of. Um, for con continuity. Um, now differentia this differentiability is a little different. But first, let's see if the, if, the, if they're continuous at negative two. If for it to be continuous at negative two, that means when you plug negative two into each of these, you should get the same value. So let's see, plug a negative two into there, you'll get negative two plus five, which will give you three. If you plug it into the bottom guy, you'll get four minus four plus three. Okay, so it's continuous. Pardon my horrible writing. So it definitely is continuous. So we can't, so it's not gonna be already, it's not gonna be C or D, so A or B. So differentiability. Okay, for it to be differentiable at a point, that means that the derivative has to be the same from both sides. So the left-hand derivative and the right-hand derivative for the derivative comes from the left value and the right value at negative two have to be the same. So let's first find the derivative of each of them. Then we're gonna plug negative, negative two in. So let me just, we do it over here. So f prime of x will be for the top guy, it's just going to be one. And then for the bottom will be two x plus two. Now let's when you plug negative two into the top, it's still going to be one. The derivative will be one. It's not going to change. If you plug negative two into here, you'll get negative four plus two, you'll get negative two there. So it's not going to be differentiable at that point because you have two different values of the derivative. So it's not differentiable. So we so B is the answer because both of those are correct. Okay, now the problem seven um has a typo, so I'm gonna skip over it. Um, remember these are questions that um, um a, a teacher made um that are very, very, I mean, I, I I wish I could take credit for these questions, but I did not make them. Um, so some of these have typos that are really weirdly worded, but he did a really good job making these very, very similar to the actual exam. But um, here's credit to the guy. So these are very, very similar questions to the actual exam, just to remind you guys. Um, but they're not the actual questions, so we should not, should not get in trouble for going over these because the college board is, it's, I don't know, I don't, I don't really agree with them not allowing us to have the real exams go over, but it's very close, so it should be very helpful. Anyways, um, problem eight. For any real number x, the limit as h approaches zero is, Okay, so this is just the derivative expression. Um, and what that um, essentially just means is that we don't gotta worry about taking the, the this, is, this is literally the definition of the, of the form of the formal definition of a derivative, if you recall. So we just can just take the derivative you know, using our, you know, fancy quick, you know, rules instead of having to do this very tediously. So we're really just taking the derivative of the cosine of x squared. So we differentiate this using the chain rule. We take the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, 
times the derivative of the cosine function, which we need the negative sine of, keep the inside the same. And that's all. And then we just simplify this. And it's, well, not, we don't even need to simplify this. It's quick to identify, so the answer is D. A quick sip of water, number nine. What is the value of x at which the maximum value of y equals 4 thirds x cubed minus 8x squared plus 15x occurs on the closed interval 0, 4? Um, OK, well, I mean, like, I guess of the quickest way to, or, well, not, well, I don't know if it's the quickest way. There's always logic. But um, you remember, this is basically dealing with um, finding the man, minimum, maximum, um, values on an interval you can, and that involves sometimes using the first derivative test, the second derivative test, looking at inflection, max, min, increasing, decreasing. Um, so let's first look at the derivative. So the derivative will be 4x squared minus 16x plus 15. And we want to understand what's going on with this on this interval. Now, if this is easy to find the zeros, I would do that, but it looks pretty complicated. So what I would just go to next, I would what I would actually do is just take the second derivative. This is much easier to work with because we can find potential inflection points by setting the second derivative equal to zero. And that would be then when x equals two. We want to study essentially what's going on to before two and after two. And we only really care about the interval from zero to four. So we want to test in here, what's going on in here. And what we can do is look at the second derivative sign. So picking a number in there, let's just say one and, and one in here, three. We're gonna plug these each into our second derivative and just care about the sign. So you just plug it in one first. We'll get eight minus 16, which is negative eight. So then it's negative. So then we know the graph um, is concave down, doing this sort of thing. And then plugging in three, 24 minus eight or 24 minus 16, positive eight. So then we know the graph is concave up. So the function is um, going to um, essentially have something going on at two. So let's just, now we could just plug in values, but, another, but one thing you want to understand is that if the second derivative is, is positive, then we know that the graph is going to basically reach its maximum at four. Because over here, if the graph is concave down, that means it's going, it's it's decreasing. It's decreasing up to up to up to two, then it increases. So you could brute force it, plug all these values into here, see which one's the largest, or you could just, you know, analyze it. So let's just do that. Let's just plug it, let's just plug it in zero, f of zero, we'll get zero, f of two, two, eight, minus four, 32 over three, minus, 32 plus 30. This is going to be way negative because you're going to have, or not, not really, but 32 over 3 minus 32 plus 2. We get 32 over 3 
minus two. And let's just compare it to when we plug in four. If you plug in four, you can see right away this is going to dominate, of course, because we're going to get four cubed, four times four, 16, 16 times four, four, 64, 64 times four, two, two, 256 over three minus 16 times eight, 80 or 96 plus eight times 15. So 81 plus 120. So again, you see it's clear that the maximum value is gonna occur when x equals four. Now, you know, we, need, we didn't need to actually plug those in. I just want to show you or reinforce that you can always plug and chug in case you're not sure. But um, this is the analytical way. Mm. Um, 10, at time t equals zero, reservoir begins filling with water. So t is greater than zero hours, the depth of the water in the reservoir is increasing at a rate of r of t inches per hour, which is the following is the best integration of r prime of two equals four. Okay, so this is one of those like ones that they want to test your um derivative of derivative with like um per per hour hour time time like like feet feet per feet squared like that sort of thing. Um because see you're you're already given the rate, but the rate is the function that we're used to like thinking about as like not being a rate. So um if we have the derivative of r of t, you're basically finding the rate of the rate. Because you're already given that the rate is r of t. So we're told, in, oh, the rate of the rate when, when t equals 2 is basically 4 inches per hour. And you got to do per hour, per hour, that sort of thing. Um, there's usually always going to be a problem like this. Not too many, but just just be 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 um be yeah, be ready to have like a, like something that made that sound weird. See, like this one says, increasing at a rate of four inches per hour per hour, um that sort of thing. Because you have the rate of the rate. Um, otherwise, just don't overthink these because this is really just in a way kind of like a language thing. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, I'm gonna do the next five in the next video. So um, please let me know if you have any questions or um, have any uh, you know comments or if I made any mistakes, like please let me know. I'm not, I'm very open to criticism. I, I wanna make sure that I do these in a way that you actually uh, get you know help from it. So too if I'm going too fast, too slow, just let me know and I'll adjust. And of course, if these are helping you, you know, go please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.